Ta -da! So is there, is there a topic on your mind? Something you'd like to discuss? I'm open to Okay. Okay. What is something that um, some type of sales discussion, negotiation uh, that you're going to be working on today or perceive or, or sometime in the very near future, buyer, seller, negotiations, discussions, topics. We had a great topic yesterday, you know, a little bit. What do you do for, what do you do when you list the property? Okay. We can discuss that. <clears throat> what do you do for marketing? Um, we can discuss uh, uh, setting up open houses. What's the best practice for an open house? The three, th the three different types of four different, there's four different types of farming, geographic, psychographic, demographic, and mini farmic. <laughs> I made the last one up, the mini farmic. They just had to go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so what, uh, about farming, uh, Todd, what would you consider the best selection of these four? Like, what would you do? I'm, I'm not, I'm not really into farming because I like, um, I have a very fast acting mind and farming is a slow, tedious, long-term cultivating, planting, watering, and seasonal, you know, think of it in the actual terms of a farmer. Sometimes in some years you may get a, a great yield, <clears throat> and some years may you may not, but you continue to invest into that farm. And so, my my style of farming is a little different than some others. More the more generic Webster dictionary terms of farming for real estate brokers where you know there's the three basic types of farms is the geographic the demographic and the psychographic <clears throat> and in generic terms in real estate the the geographic is whiskey ridge okay you go to your favorite title rep whoever that may be and say i want to get all the labels <clears throat> in whiskey ridge 500, 548 homes in Whiskey Ridge. And you just start hitting them with postcards. You do what you can to door knock the neighborhood throughout the year. You track every single sale in Whiskey Ridge. And so you set yourself up on a, um, you can do a little geographic uh, line to have the MLS inform you uh, whenever there is a new listing and when it goes pending and when it goes sold. <clears throat> so you know exactly what's going on in that area. And you basically mark your territory, become an expert in that geographic, okay? Then the next, the next part is the demographic. And this is what all the title reps are selling you that they've got the hottest and the best way to find everybody who wants to sell in a certain area because they, their technology is better than the other person's technology and all that other garbage and baloney. Um, it's all pulled from the same, same information. And so uh, the demographic is, okay, I don't want all 548 names and numbers in Whiskey Ridge. So I want to, I want, I want to shoot for a demographic number that it's probably going to be almost virtually impossible to door knock. But can you pull out of risky whiskey, 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 whiskey ridge? <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, people that are most likely to sell and the title reps are go, I've got the perfect technology. Okay. And then they're going to give you 197 names out of whiskey ridge that might be possibly 
thinking of selling based upon demographic factors such as recording dates, most likely, call it the most likely to sell, okay? And so <clears throat> you can pull out a demographic uh, within a different, within a larger geographic farm, you can pull a demographic out of that area. And then the psychographic is what you basically necessarily um, more, this is more of a social media type of farm, okay? Uh, where you can identify like interests and create groups of people, primarily on social media that you can farm. You know, uh, specific interests, Boeing, okay? Specific interests could be sports. Specific interests could be political. Specific interests could be um, other social uh, attributes. Uh, and so you pool and create groups and you farm in terms of network, okay? Networking is a subproduct of psychographic farming. So those are the three uh, different types of farms that you can select and work. Just keep in mind that the farming is a long-term plan. It's a long-term process. You identify where you want to set up, then you go about <clears throat> weeding, you go about removing the rocks, you set up the fence, uh, you get the soil ready, you start planting seeds, <laughs> you water, <laughs> fertilize, let the sun bless it, let the waters rain and bless your crops, okay? And so, but you've got to do some work in order for that blessing to occur. The sun is always out there, the water will always drop, but if you, if you just let it drop on weeds, all you're gonna get is weeds. But if you cultivate the soil and manicure it and fertilize it and do what you can that we have with our, with our hands and the tools that we have available, uh, you won't necessarily grow weeds. You can actually grow something that will be useful and needful uh, for you to feed your family and put back into society at some form. So it does take a lot of that human effort uh, in order to be blessed by the natural elements that are provided for us. So farming does take a long, long time. And it's, it's an investment both financially emotion, and emotionally because you're like, I'm spending all this money and I'm not getting anything back. That causes stress. That's emotion. <laughs> okay. The financing part is the part where you're writing these checks or you're getting this debit card sent out and you're like, ah, okay, that's the financial part. So just keep in mind, it's a financial and there's an emotional cost to farming. Um, and there's also a physical cost to farming too. <laughs> Or you got to go out in there and knock some doors. Not so much in the, in the, not so much in the demographic farming, because then you'd be driving, you know, around the block, stop, get out, knock, driving around the other corner, stop, get out, knocks. You know, trying to do a demographic farming door knocking is virtually impossible, because you're just going to have certain homes in these different areas. And then of course the psycho psychographic farming. I have a, I've been using a technique of farming for the last couple of years that I call adverse possession farming. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Adverse possession farming. Okay. Let me go back to the whiskey, whiskey, whiskey ridge scenario. So let's say, and I, we don't know who's farming what, okay. If you lived in, in a certain area, you're going to get stuff jammed in your mailbox from different types of realtors. Some areas are more harder hit than others because it's, you know, likable. And so you're, don't think that you're the only, you know, game in town when you pick a quote unquote, your whiskey ridge. That's a metaphor for your farm. So when you pick your whiskey ridge, don't be so naive to think no one else knows about this hot neighborhood, okay? More than likely, there's some others that are doing it as well. And I know that. So um, getting back to my point, it was where adverse possession farming takes place, is when I go and list a piece of property, um, there is 
four, four calls of action, four touches within 40 days. Four touches in 40 days. Um, if the neighborhood is something that I like, they're going to probably get three touches and not four. And then I won't claim it as adverse possession. So when I list a piece of property, and let's say I list a piece of property in Whiskey Ridge, okay, I'm not going to send out 458 freaking flyers or letters to everyone in Whiskey freaking Ridge. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send them to the 20 to 30 that are the closest to that property. So I call my title pet. Hey, title person, I need um, 40 labels or I need 30 labels, or I only want to do 20 labels, it's generally about 20, 25 to 35 around this house, everything around it. It doesn't matter how long they live there, what their demographics are. I don't care. Renter, non-renter, owner, non-owner. I don't care. I want those 30 just around that house. <clears throat> and so I'll, I'll either have them send me three sets of labels or send me the CSV file and I will print my own labels. Right when that listing goes live, let's say it goes live on a Friday, I have my stuff in the mail on a Thursday. And so it's um, just listed. Uh, neighbors expect heavier volumes of traffic through the neighborhood. Uh, we are having an open house on this weekend. Please stop by Early Bird if you'd like to uh, come and bring this flyer with you for uh, your ticket to er have an early entry. Uh, we have signs available. If you'd like to place one in your yard, this is please slow down children at play. Uh, you're welcome to borrow those if you want. Just want to let you know there'll be a higher degree of, of volume of vehicles coming through the neighborhood within the next week or so until we get this property sold. If you have any questions regarding the property, please let us know. So that letter goes out. <clears throat> then uh, it gets door knocked. So there's two touches within within five days. Then once the property goes pending, we send out the other pending letter. Hey, as we promised, we wanted to keep you informed about what is going on with this piece of property. This, cur this home is currently under contract. You're gonna be having a new neighbor move in within the next three to four weeks. You're going to start to see a decrease of traffic of buyers coming through the neighborhood. By the way, if there's any thought or something you need about selling, please let us know. So that's the third touch, generally within two weeks. Then once it closes, okay, we're going to send out another letter with the closing price, what we listed it for, what we closed for, and then we're going to door knock it one more time. Okay, so that's three, that's five touches within four weeks. That's how I claim adverse possession within somebody else's farm. And it's just 35 to 40 within the little area of um, Whiskey Ridge. It's very easy to manage. It's, it's another it's called micro farming, adverse possession by micro farming. And so I'm just going to take a small chunk of somebody else's farm and I'm going to claim it and I'm going to work it. And then every month I send another 35, um, uh, 35, um, I send that same 35 a postcard from CoreFact. CoreFact will send out automatically and you can select a whole year's worth of information based upon holidays and special events, blah, blah, blah. You can figure that out. And then you door knock it once or twice a year. And it's very easy to manage when you have 35 to 40 doors to knock. It generally takes an hour. It'll take less than 90 minutes. And that is another form of adverse, uh, micro farming by adverse possession. And you don't have to do that around every listing. Only the listings that you like, that the houses are close to one another, and it's a level street. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really know that you're going to do a good job in that property and around that, around that, I don't do it on every listing. I'm selective. 
you know, some listings will, you know, I will try to manage the adverse possession by microform. Some listings I don't buy. I'll do this. I'll do the three letters, but I won't do the door knocking and I won't claim it in order to maintain that little area in somebody else's bigger farm. Do you think the uh, data that you get from a title report is any better or equivalent than the data that's in Red X? It's all recorded. I, to me personally, it's all public information recorded. Yeah, comes from the I, same I'm assuming database. they're getting it from the same same area. Okay. Well, um, the matrix, the matrix, uh, the MLS has a great farming has great farming tools as well. Well, I am not going to claim that I know how to use it. I will claim that I know it exists. <laughs> um, where you can actually pull the same information that um, your title reps can pull as well. Very similar, if not the same. There's farming tools in Matrix that you can actually pull your own uh, CSV files for mailing and labels. Yeah, I don't okay. see how you're able to pull data on neighbors that haven't done anything. I'm gonna play with it. I don't believe you can. Yep. I, I think it's all transactions that have turned that you can uh, get. Check, check it out. I know it exists. Okay. I, I know they've been uh, really pushing some, um, I haven't taken the time to do this, Jim. All right. but I've seen them plugging the uh, farming through matrix. Okay. It's not, it, it's not, I'm sorry, farming through realist my mistake i use matrix ah. and i meant realist so okay. i apologize different ball game for the records okay yeah i meant realist okay farming through realist that not makes matrix. sense the, it's okay. fairly new they it is it. yeah You're right and and they offer very good seminars live seminars uh um where they explain everything and it's very good i did to, to, uh, so there's, the one... um, there's Ivy too, which is, uh, I've used that a couple of times. That's pretty good for looking up addresses and mm -hmm. phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So the other kicker is with Red X, you get phone numbers and emails with the data. Yes, circle prospecting. Yes, yes, that's. So I signed up for a year and uh, oh. so I've got data coming out my ass or my ears <laughs> so I've been trying to get to the point where uh, a I have time and I want to do a data pool on a uh, farm area and at least focus on sending market reports uh, maybe some video um, some via email if you will and see how that uh, pans out there are <clears throat> top producers uh, in the United States and in, in, in and around that have, that pay um, VRs uh, or VAs, VAs. Virtual, virtual assistants to make calls for them for three hours mm -hmm. a day, okay? Three hours a day, five days a week. And they pay them $20 an hour. 20 to $25 an hour for three hours a day to set up phone, to set up appointments for them based on the, um, and they're getting better results typically than the high priced other forms of uh, paid uh, incoming um, requests. <clears throat> it's not for everybody, but it does require you to have some phone skills yourself because uh, these are, unlicensed individuals that will sit or stand or wherever their virtual offices are uh, <clears throat> in in various areas in in the, throughout the world and in the United States as well that will make phone calls and if you think about it you know if they're if you want three hours a day at 20 hours at sixty dollars okay and then 60 times five 300. okay 
$300 a week, and then you bonus them for appointments and leads. Okay, they get paid for, their incentive is not the $20 an hour, their incentive is to create a lead, a bona fide, verifiable lead, which you, which they qualify and verify, then they turn over. And then if you go out to the appointment, then they're bonused on that as well. So, you know, if you want to take a look at that, and there are <clears throat> brokers that I know that have five to six of these VAs. And these, and these VAs are just like real estate brokers. They have different styles to their calling. They have different approaches and they're just, they're people. So everyone's a little different. <clears throat> you may have some Todd's calling for you. You may have some Werner's calling for you. You may have some Megan's calling for you, but you can interview and hire the VAs that you feel will best fit with you. And then there is some training that you will provide for them and they will make phone calls for you in areas that, I mean, you're basically paying for a lead as if you're going to be paying for any other incoming sales uh, contact. <clears throat> and, you know, some of these brokers that have five to eight of these VAs, they're spending, you know, three or $4,000 a month easily easily spending three or four thousand dollars a month but they're listing four to five homes per month too i've got a va i have a relationship with if you need some information um if you need her information contact me okay. for virtual that she does phone calling mm -hmm. mm. so please interview yeah. interview 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 your va find out how much phone i mean sometimes you know, there's a lot of people out there. I'm not. I don't know who Marilee is talking about, but in my VA, in my VA experience, everyone calls himself a VA, but sometimes they're not really effective as as well. And so you you need a very you need to really be quick to slow to hire, quick to fire. Um, you have to have a good system set up too. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but if if they're not closing deals, if they're just making contacts and they're not getting appointments, move on quickly. <clears throat> but I feel, like, mm -hmm. I feel like with hiring virtual assistants, you got to know yourself, like how to convert that way you can train well as well. So. Yes. And so when that, when, the, when you're absolutely right, that V that uh, virtual assistant is also relying on you once they get somebody on the hook for you to finish the finish, finish reeling them in and get into the boat and scooping them up in the net. Yeah. <clears throat> So there, there, you know, a lot of topics we discussed today, the various forms of uh, farming, some things like that, and move to um, uh, virtual assistants. Of course, you don't need a virtual assistant. You could be your own person and spend two or three hours picking up the phone. And in the beginning, you know, depending upon your budgets and what it is that you do and how you want to do it, perhaps you are your virtual assistant until you can get some, you know, uh, meet in the bank, and um, then you can start to grow your business uh, doing it that way. Or if you just want to jump in and commit to three or four thousand dollars a month for uh, marketing, um, do that. Uh, but just keep in mind, it is a three to four month cycle on that rate of return. So if you're going to commit to a three or four thousand dollar bill per month, be prepared not to have a return for about five, five to six months. So just be aware of that. Because it's easy to go broke quickly in this business. It's also very easy to go rich. That's right, baby. I was trying to say the same thing. You just got to hustle. Yeah. Yes. Well, the reason I say it's easy to go broke in this business is I see new real estate brokers and real estate brokers spending their money on useless shit. Excuse my French. That's true. I don't quite understand why everybody's so gung ho about uh, trying to get leads to the drop in their lap that are ready to go uh, and pay for all of the gimmicks that are out there. My God, my Facebook newsfeed is just littered with all the BS 
lead generation propaganda that's out there. I've tried some. I've tried some stuff too. Okay, I I admit I've I've tried some stuff. You know. Did you? I love. Did I didn't you, get anything out of it. I was about to, and then I was like, I hung up, and then I made some calls, and I'm like, yo, don't go to that company. I'm like, okay, I see it myself. <laughs> and I got a pitch from another guy wanting three grand a month, and they guaranteed like three, like 30, 20 appointments. And I'm like, dude, all I got to do is just go go out, you know, and meet three Fizbos, and I can close one. <laughs> so I'm like, I <clears throat> All you gotta do is just put your own hustle to it, whether you door knock or whether you, you know, you um, uh, do cold calling, I mean, or open houses. Those are the three that are freaking free and have the greatest prospect, especially that open house. I'm a big believer in open houses. What about you, Mary Lee? What's your point of view? I know that you like to spend in, in marketing and advertising. I don't know what, in the beginning, um, yeah, how did you do it in the beginning, Mary Lee? Oh, I did open houses. Oh my God, I did so many. I did them for everybody at my company, other companies. That was my jam for sure. And it was kind of the market I went into too. I got my license in 2006, you know, and then the market went. Mm. So um, yeah, and then I joined a, a team that did short sales. <laughs> But um, yeah, I like what you said, I think, Jim, uh, you got to find your jam and what works for you, what feels comfortable. Some people buy leads, some people door knock, some people do FISBO, yep. you know, what is comfortable, what fits your lifestyle? Um, yeah, work what feels good to you. Generally, your uh, when I when I review business plans, um, they're what what they want and what they do sometimes don't square. Um, and it's, you know, your actions are determined by the goals that you set. The behaviors that you engage in are determined by the goals you set. So, I mean, if you set a goal to sell eight homes in a year, you're gonna have much different actions and behaviors than a person who has set a goal to sell 30 homes a year. And one, it's not saying one is better than the other. It's just that one has different actions and behaviors. And those actions and behaviors can be learned and duplicated. So if you want to do more, you can look at those that are doing more and find out what actions and behaviors they're doing and then fit it in with your, with your style. And so just trying to, to identify what it is you want to accomplish and then what are the behaviors and actions that are going to get you to that point? And the actions and behaviors are different. Okay. Like, um, like, like I've heard, you know, merrily or repeat and, you know, Jim stated it, you know, find, find what works for you. Okay. There's not one path that'll go to eight transactions a year. There's not one path that'll no. take you to 30 transactions a year. There's different paths and you find that path that you are passionate about freaking work it. Is it bad to kind of um, be like a jack of all trades and work with all different like first time home buyers, sellers, physicals, investors, because that's where I'm kind of at right now. <laughs> well, you're new and you should be exploring all different types and getting deals wherever you can find them. Look under every so, yeah. rock. Absolutely. Yeah, expend yourself to the maximum, like you are doing, Jose. Look under every rock, baby. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Cool. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Woo uh, so I just want to—I I, want to recap. Oh, Werner, what are one or two things that you got out of today's? I mean, we talked about all over the thing, and it's—you're it, not going to be able to capture all of it but what are one or two morsels that stuck with you today Werner? Uh, it stuck with me that I should do more uh, by myself uh, getting out there and contact or knocking and calling so uh, that's what stuck with me and uh, that I will do 
Awesome. Awesome. Celine, what are, what are two things uh, that you heard or felt today that stuck with you? That I should probably start doing more open houses. Okay. 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 That works. Not really part of my business plan, but I just don't, I never do them. So I've never yep. had any luck with them. So. Oh, oh that's a yeah, gold I'm, line. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sort of in the same camp with Celine. I did them because my sellers wanted me to do them, not because I liked oh. them. <laughs> I, I, that, that, I mean, I'm just being honest and trying. I know that they work. I did get some business out of it, but I would rather spend, you know, three or four hours. This is going to sound sick to some of you, so I hope that this doesn't hurt your ears. <laughs> I would rather spend two or three hours on the phone prospecting than at Same. an open house. Yeah, or door knocking. To di to different things. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah. I guess what um, you guys have been saying, you know, do what you're good at, but maybe that's a, an avenue I should try. You should, because you're new. You're still new to the industry, Celine. And yeah. in, in order to reach your goals, you need to be hustle, 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 work, 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 work. And, but and... I'm lazy, Todd. Well... <laughs> Thank, uh, Captain Obvious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, Celine. Jr. Uh, what are one or two things uh, that uh, you're able to walk away with? Uh, I haven't heard of uh, VAs or virtual assistants very much, so learned more here than I have anywhere else about that. Okay. Good. 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 How about Mary Lee O'Brien? Well, I was going to ask you about what you do around your open houses. So now I think I'm going to do, um, you know, really make an attempt <laughs> to send out the postcards when I'm listing. No, when I sell. I think I'm going to do, for me, really working it would be when I actually get an offer or sell it, then, you know, farm that small area around the house. Well, let's, let's, let's maybe tomorrow talk about those that have, been really super successful, Jim, uh, at open houses, and uh, open up the discussion uh, from the from the panel and just talk about the real nuts and bolts. I mean, terms of placements of signs and flags and balloons and treats and everything else at open houses. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, so thanks, Marilee, for bringing up tomorrow's subject. Uh, uh, Jose. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as like adverse, um, as far as farming, that you know, the adverse possession, as far as farming, that's one thing that I got. You know, I have done, but just being more consistent with, like as far as sending letters, because I typically door knock or uh, you know, cold car, uh, you know, around the area. But yeah, that's something I got to be more consistent once I sell a property or uh, promoting an open house um, and doing that. Jim, Coach Jim would say, you got to have your systems, bro. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you got to have your systems, bro. Okay. I have one flyer that I use for almost every listing. One flyer. That's it. One design, one flyer. Same thing with my mailers. My mailers look almost exactly like the flyers. Okay. As they it's, should, right? It's so it's, easy. It's branding too. Yes. Plug and play and boom. Yes. Yeah, I got it. I got to steal yours. Oh, wow. Use my flyer. I don't care. <laughs> you got to have your systems, bro. Systems, <laughs> systems, systems. Repeatable and scalable. Jim, uh, what what are so, uh, what are what are your final thoughts? Take us home. Uh, I, 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 I'm a big believer in uh, real estate being used in fishing analogies. And uh, when I go fishing, uh, I don't want to come home skunked. And so I always go with the mindset that I'm going to get me a fish. And when you're doing an open house, I, I, don't get me wrong, an open house is an investment. It's an investment of three, four hours of your time. And so I, I'm very particular where I went and uh, I wanted traffic and I wanted to be able to get opportunity to go where the fish are and get me to get one in the boat. And um, 
So that's why I always did open houses because that's where the freaking fish are. Uh, for me, cold calling, uh, whew, I, I haven't tried it in all in all transparency. So I definitely want to. I want to give it a whirl. I want to mindset. Can I, I mindset. give it a whirl? Look at that mindset. Yeah. Can I, I share something that has worked for me after you mentioned the talk? What was yeah, yeah. that? Kick it. Yeah. So one thing as far as open houses, but also another thing is having effective open houses. And one thing that I've been doing is um, it has saved me a lot of time because, you know, one thing when I promote my own listings, I get a bombarded by, you know, social media requests and messages and everything like that. But I have a system where I've created where I just say, hey, I have an open house 11 to 2, and I just copy and paste that message to every single body that has messaged me. Okay, pause. Boom. Pause, 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 pause. <laughs> We're going to start with you tomorrow, Jose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a much longer conversation. Yeah. Okay. You've, you've opened up a can of sardines. Okay. There's a lot of information packed in that little statement that you have there. So we're going to rip 